Hello and welcome to a stock analysis of Computer Center. Computer Center are a IT development and wholesalers. I found that actually 79% of their revenues are wholesaling, which is basically selling laptops and other IT stuff to large clients. So you've got to really consider them more than anything as a wholesaling business. They focus on very large companies and public sector and they made more profits in the second half of 2021 than in the previous full year. So this company is performing very strongly and they give you a 2.9% dividend yield. Now, before I carry on, please remember that I'm just a guy on the internet vlogging my investment journey. So always use a financial advisor before making any investments. And please check my disclaimer at the end of the video. So they have headquarters in San Francisco and Atlanta in the US, in Hatfield in the UK, and in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And so from here, they do have a global outreach. We see that most of their profits come from the UK and Germany, with some really strong organic growth there. And they recently acquired a company called Pivot in the US and Canada. And you can see how their US profit has increased quite strongly only in the last year since then. Like I said, 79% of their revenues comes from their technology sourcing sector, which is essentially just procuring at a massive scale laptops and other IT stuff to then, to then sell to these large wholesale clients. They do have a professional services business segment, however, which is 8% of their revenues. And this is more of the, this is more consulting and the IT infrastructure stuff. And they have what they call their managed services segment as well. And this is tech support. To, so these companies that they've sold all this gear to, they then can provide tech support to afterwards. But this is only 13% of their overall revenues. So looking at their revenue by business segment, not only is the wholesaling part the major contributor, but you can see how that's ramped up and accelerated in the last few years, turning them ever more into basically a wholesaling company. And looking at the breakdown of revenue by region, we see the good organic growth in, the, in Europe but then there's obviously a good trend of explosive growth in revenue in the US. Obviously, that was helped by the purchase of Pivot. Now, there's nothing more attractive to me than when the numbers of a company look amazing, uh, which they certainly do for this company. And I'll go to go on to that in a moment. But when all the numbers check out amazingly, and then when I look at their look at when i look at their history the last five years there's actually not much going along so they're making loads of money without doing any tinkering of the business and i really do like that so the only big news items i could pick out was that in 2018 they bought misco solutions from the netherlands for 70 million then in 2019 peter ryan replaced greg Locke as chairman and in 2020, they bought Pivot in the US and Canada for 80 million. And that then led to an explosive growth in revenues in the US. You can see that the share price has been doing amazingly well over the last five years. But along with everything else in the sector, it started to dip down a bit since ever since about ever since about last summer. However, they produced the Q1 trading update only recently. And in their Q1 trading update, it was very positive. They, they announced strong revenue growth in line with expectations and, prof, and modest profit growth. They linked the modest profit growth to having signed one new massive customer, which then diluted the margin. And also the fact that now that we're going out of this COVID lockdown period, their cost bases are returning back to normal. So looking at their profit and loss statement, and it really is a beautiful, beautiful 
trend. We see the revenues increasing, in fact, doubling since 2015. And the operating profit and net income increasing very impressively as well. This is a exemplary track record and trend and looks very impressive. In preparing this video, I actually learned a couple of things. One was I couldn't find the pivot. I couldn't find the pivot acquisition as an expenditure, which I'd assumed would come in the profit and loss statement. So a learning for me from doing this video is that actually when companies do acquisitions, that doesn't show up in the profit and loss statement. It will show up in the statement of cash flows and on the balance sheet where you'll see it as a deduction in the cash and a increase in net assets. And you can see the acquisition here and you can see the acquisition of pivot here as a increase in the intangible assets. That will mainly be increasing expected sales due to ownership of that business. Following on from that, I also realized that dividends don't, don't feature in the profit and loss statement either. Dividends show up in the statement of cash flow and in the balance sheet in the, the, the payment of the dividends will then lead to a reduction in cash. So that's something I learned from doing this video and I'm glad to share that. Interestingly, although acquisitions don't show in the profit and loss statement, on researching this, disposals do show. And that explains this 42 million anomaly here, where from a disposal, they actually gained 42 mil in 2015. So here we see their, here we see their net income history. And you can see a slight widening here. You can see a widening of the income and expenditure as their net income popped up. What struck me here is the, the, how this profile differs from other companies I've been looking at. There's a very small difference between income and expenditure when you look at the overall numbers and the net income is well lower than where the income and expenditure is. And I think this is a reflection of this being more like a wholesale business. If you take a look at Softcat, which is another IT company I looked at, looked at you see that the net income looks more, a lot more apparent than the income and expenditure. And that's because with Softcat being more of an engineering company, more of a consulting and engineering company than a wholesaler. The net income is a lot higher as a proportion to the revenues than is the case with Computer Center. So against my initial expectations when I first looked at Computer Center, I really need to consider it as a wholesaling company more than a IT, more than a kind of IT infrastructure company. So onto the statement of cash flows. And they made 224 million from normal activities. And that can be considered mainly as the outputs from their profit and loss statement. And 8 million from disposals. They spent 32 million on PPE and intangibles, 8 million on leasing. And they splashed out 62 million on dividends. They also engaged in 20 million of share buybacks and they lost 130 mil 139 million on net debt payments. So against my expectations based on the profit and loss, they, actu they actually ended up with a 29 million cash loss. And this is mostly due to this 139 million net debt payments. 50 million of that is their lease liabilities, which is just cost that you'd expect from them having to rent out, from them having to rent their offices. But this, there's a large number here of about 100 million repayment of loans and credit facility. Now, this company doesn't have barely any long term debt. 
So I interpret this as being being they do have a credit facility and in a short on a short term basis they do have money pop, popping in and out of this short term credit facility which I think must relate to them buying lots of PCs and keyboards and whatever in bulk and so they have to use a bit of debt but on a short term basis because that's more suitable for them than than using their cash so I guess this is just part and parcel of their wholesaling operations. But that's kind of a guess. That 100 million number was unusually high for 2021. It was only 20 million the previous year. So that could be like an anomaly. But unfortunately, my conclusion from the statement of cash flows is it's a bit blemished by this. There's something ongoing on there which I don't understand, which led to a negative cash flow. And we see how their net assets have doubled since 2015, up to 0.8 billion from 0.4 billion back then. It's generally a healthy profile. Things to point out are the intangible assets jumped up to 0.3 billion in 2020 with the acquisition of the pivot business. And it's notable that in 2021, there was a build up in their inventories. And they actually say in their updates that this was because of supply chain disrupt disruption related to COVID led to a build up in inventories. It's great to see them piling up a nice pile of cash there. And I love it how they've got no proper debt. By that, I mean debt, you know, long term debts held with, with a bank. And there was also a stack up of trade payables, which I think is also related to the COVID lockdowns. What's really apparent is that most of their assets are short term assets and most of their liabilities are short term liabilities. And this shows you again the signature of a wholesaling company more than the IT infrastructure company that I was first expecting. You see that most of the assets are actually trade receivables. So that's laptops they've sold, they're waiting the cash for. Inventories, that's stuff, that's laptops and keyboards they've got in stock ready to sell. And accrued income, which is stuff which they've sold and they're just waiting the money for plus quite a relatively high contribution of cash. And then trade payables make up a lot of their liabilities. And that's all of the wholesale, that's all of the inventory that they have to buy to then, sell, to then sell, all within a relatively short time span. So it's interesting to look at the makeup of their assets and liabilities and compare it to a lot of the other stocks I've been looking at, particularly the commodity stocks, where everything is in reverse. But with Computer Center being, as far as I'm concerned, a wholesaling company, the majority of their assets and liabilities are short term, and the minority are long term. Whereas, of course, it's reverse for, say, a commodities company. And when I look at their valuation profile, Again, the nature of the beast is reflected here, where we have the revenues towering above the market cap. The thing with these profiles now is they, they sort of show me more what kind of animal it is, rather than being able to use it to, for valuation purposes. But it is, I think, useful in showing you the trend in terms of market cap against the value, against the revenues and against the net asset value. Because I think you see reflect a good, I think you see where it is in the cycle here. And obviously you'd much rather have been investing down here before market cap raced away from the net asset values than, um, than now where that trend seems to be reversing despite the increases in net asset and the increases in revenues. 
given the increase in revenues and net assets, it's a relatively well-valued company compared with a lot of their competitors where I think you'd see a much narrower mar margin. But still, you can clearly see the trend and the trend isn't your friend in this instance. And you'd want to see the market cap return back down to the net asset value here before going in. So here I've got the price to book versus price to earnings. And we see Computer Center is down here a lot better valued than all of the other IT stocks I track. So that's positive. Although in some respects, these dot blocks tell you more what kind of animal it is than actually perhaps being good for valuation purposes per se. And it's notable that I've actually now split up my IT stocks. So I've got the more wholesaling and retail stocks here and the more IT infrastructure stocks here. Interestingly though, Sage Group, they sell, they're like a retail stock because they just sell computer software and Avest sell, Avest sell computer virus software. So those are pure retail stocks. Whereas Computer Center is only 80% a wholesale stock even, not a retail stock, with a, with a nice chunk of services here. It's actually quite notable that you know, maybe these guys are too expensive related to computer computer center. When you consider how much more retail they are and the current situation we are in the, in the macro environment. So on to sector. One thing that I've learned some real hard lessons about this year is the importance of considering the sector that a stocks within as part of your overall investment strategy and i've been previously using this website livecharts.co.uk but they only gave me a five-year profile now within that five-year five-year profile computer center's performance has been excellent compared with the overall sector but i made a real breakthrough whilst researching this video which is the discovering this website find data they're actually a new zealand website and there i've got these amazing sector charts going all the way back to 2001 and that obviously gives you a much better picture of what's going on in terms of the sector trends than with the five years i had available previously overall in terms of the software and computer services sector we're in a kind of a dangerous period now at and also close to the all time highs. Actually, I've discovered actually that to me, there's a clear asymmetric triangle formation going on. Symmetrical triangles are one of the most basic technical signals that you can have. Go and take a look on Investopedia where I got these images from. But in terms of sector, I would want to see if it breaks this triangle down or up before investing in. Something I noticed that was very interesting was how high was the longer term pattern for the software and computer services sector and how that also resembles renewable stocks and Tesla now. Now, back at the year 2000, when we had the dot com bubble, this was a brand new sector. It didn't really exist before. And it was actually up here. And you can see after the 2020 dot com bubble burst, the entire sector that had pumped up then crashed violently. And then it wasn't until about 10 years later that the internet really took over the world. And then you can see the, this whole sector perform amazingly well until now where it then became like a mature sector and i think exactly the thing is exactly the same thing is going on now with renewable stocks if you look at tesla 
a massive bubble the last few years and overvaluation. Now, if you go and look at my Greta Gold playlist, I go into all the different renewable stocks. And here's a couple of other examples. ITM Power PLC, a massive pump up last year. And, AF, and AFC Energy, massive pump up last year. And I think that that's because renew, renewables are a brand new sector and they've just gone through their massive speculation pump at the start. And I really am fairly convinced to myself that they're now crashing all the renewable stocks. And then it won't be until actually 10 years from now that all these renewable stocks are actually a sensible business proposition. But then I'd expect them to all do really well the decade after that. So, yeah, when I saw that, I couldn't help but think of the renewable stocks. And there's my prediction for what's happening with renewable stocks. Looking at the shareholders, and it's very apparent that only a few individuals own about well over 36 percent of the stock. This Peter, Od this Peter Ogden and Philip Holm, these are the guys that actually formed the company back in 1981. And we see that they still hold a massive shareholding. Plus, you've got this. This Hadley Trust is linked to them. And these uh, computer center directors holdings, I think, is also linked to linked to them or perhaps a few other directors. But only a few individuals hold about 36 percent of the stock, plus nine percent is treasury shares. So about 40 percent of the stock is locked in with only a few interested parties that can either be a good thing or a bad thing none of these guys have sold before so it can be a good thing like with frontier development so with these guys you know uh, a relatively small amount of the overall shares being available can it could lead to explosive share growth and you could say has led to explosive share growth but it can be a bad thing as well in that then if one of them gets divorced and then their, their ex-wife decides to sell it or, or something like that, you know, then it can be a bad effect the opposite way. But the main point is most of the shares, a lot of the shares are held just by a few individuals. In terms of the asset managers, um, none of them have been selling the last five years apart from JP Morgan who've just started selling shares. So to summarize, Computer Center are mainly a computer wholesalers when you look into the raw numbers. Most of their assets and liabilities are very short term and they have a tiny relative operating margin. Their income statement and balance sheet look exemplary. Their cash flow statement had a confusing blemish in it though which I couldn't understand. The whole sec the sector as a whole is embattled and I've observed a symmetrical triangle pattern and I'd want to wait for that. I'd want to wait for the outcome of that before investing in this sector anyway. And now is a dangerous time, I think, to invest in the wholesale company because of the macro situation. So my conclusion is, I want to wait out the next few quarters anyway before buying any stocks due to the uncertain macro picture. I want to wait to see how this sector trend break. But the company's performance is excellent. It's actually got one of the best tra track records and everything, all of my technical checks fl with flying colors but it's just a shame that it seems like it's the wrong time to be buying now. If you did hold them, the main risk that I've identified are the risk that we're going to a recession. As a wholesaler, things could turn nasty quickly. And 37% of the stock is owned by only a few individuals. So I hope you've enjoyed my stock analysis of Computer Center. So I hope you're enjoying the summer and 
Good luck with your investments. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support me, I'm on Patreon. There's a link to my Patreon page in the video description below.